Good day. So today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on using arpeggiators on drums to create some cool little rhythms rather than program them by hand. This can just turn out to be more interesting and faster. Um, basically, I've got some drum beats here that I've recorded. My brother is a wicked drummer. Plays for a band called Gene Defect. You should check them out. And uh, yeah, basically this is the drum beat. So what we're going to do is just create three different MIDI tracks. We'll call one kick, we'll call one overhead, and we'll call one uh, snare. Then we'll create a couple of MIDI clips, uh, five bars long. Just duplicate the MIDI clip. Then we're going to go hit, take one of these drum hits. So solo the kick, listen to the kick. Try and find a good one. Yeah, that one's pretty decent. You might end up finding this might sound weird because there's a bit of symbol in there, so every time you resample it, you're going to hear that symbol, but I, I sometimes think that can sound good anyway. So we'll take that kick hit and we'll open up this kick channel and just drag that sample straight from there down into this section down the bottom here which says drop midi effects, audio effects, instruments or samples here. If you drop it there it'll just drop a sampler, a simpler sorry, straight there with the sample exactly where you've chopped it. But you have a look there. It's pretty much exactly where I've chopped it up here on the grid. So now we can just get rid of that channel. Don't need it. Um, with the overheads you might just take um, some symbols. Yeah we'll just take that hi-hat. take that much. Just cut that. And again, same thing. Just open up the overhead channel and drop your sample straight down there and it'll put the slice or the loop points of the simpler exactly where you've sliced it on the grid. Get rid of that channel and then we'll take a snare. You just want to take a single hit snare. The reason why I'm using recorded drums other than synthesized uh, sampled drums that have been extremely processed is because I'm the feel I'm going to create will be more of like a jazzy sort of live feel just to sort of take it away from everything else that's being done electronically today I guess. So take that snare hit, open up the snare channel, again drop the snare down there get rid of the snare channel. So now basically we've got drum hits in MIDI we can just create beats out of it. So um, C3 is where the uh, the natural pitch of the sample lies in Simpler. I'll just create a really straight beat just to show you what I'm going to do. Actually I'll just loop that. And basically this is going to sound pretty ratty until I'm finished with the arpeggiators and stuff. So we'll create some snares. I'm just messing with the volume of the snare, making it a bit louder because uh, before it's the snare sounded louder because of the overhead microphones, so it's sort of giving it a bit more tone. Uh, that sounds pretty straightforward and a bit boring, so uh, what we'll do now is we'll put some arpeggiators before the devices and we'll put the um, uh, the rate probably on 16th notes, so basically it won't really do much at the moment. It's just gating a little bit, if we put that on 100, you see it does absolutely nothing, 50 gates it, uh, move it down from there, we'll gate it more. It's pretty cool. And then uh, you've got this groove option here, and we can put that on swing mode. 
and you can see that's sort of giving it a bit of swing but all the velocities are still the same so you might want to grab a utility click gain you just click any parameter basically on here and you see it changes over in the channel just to um, sort of make it easier to automate things so every second hit or every second and third hit will make them softer in velocity will make them go up slightly and we'll just drop the automation channel down here so it's easy to duplicate just highlight that bit and just duplicate it for the rest of the bar so it sounds like a kind of jazzy sort of thing we might play with the gate a little bit drop it down again just make it easier so um, I might, I might want to open the hi-hats up a bit here so I'll bring the gate up slightly sounding pretty jazzy. Then I might automate the arpeggiation rate as well. And I'll open that so I can actually see it. And I'll just go between sixteenths and thirty seconds. So I'll start at sixteenths and then every now and then we'll put a thirty second in there. So I'll change the grid to sixteenths. Thirty second there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. And then I might just duplicate that as well. So we've just changed a really straight, simple feel from this to this using just the utility in the arpeggiator rather than going in and programming it all with velocities and such by hand. So now we've done the overheads, um, we can add the snare in and it'll sound like it's got a bit more feel. Might make those snares a bit shorter just to give them a more sort of poppy funky feel. Sounds a bit weird, I might add a bit of a reverb. Might turn it down a little bit. So now if we add the kicks in now, it'll sound a bit silly. So you probably want to do some arpeggiation on them as well, give them a bit of a swing feel. So drop the arpeggiator before the device again, sixteenths, uh, put it on a sixteenth swing, same as the other one. Uh, again, you might use a utility to mess a bit with the, um, the volume. The reason why I'm using utility and not the volume automation over here is because in the end, if you want to change the mix overall, it's just easier to change that rather than have an automation and have to come in here and highlight the whole channel and bring it down that way. So I use all the utility for all the volume automation. So again I might bring the velocity down and have it creep back up. Might change the pattern a little bit, put a kick here. Might put a volume automation here. Might put another slight volume automation here as well. 
Yep, that's cool. So I'll take that, duplicate it a bunch of times. Another cool thing you can do with the hi hats if you want to make them sound a bit more glitchy, you can turn the looping option on. So I'm not going to do it yet until we bring the length back. That sounds nice and glitchy. We can do the same with the kicks if you want to make it sound really glitchy. Put it on loop. It almost sounds like a bass hit now rather than a kick drum. So now you can EQ that, and interesting thing to do with EQs is um, put one of the poles right up, mess with the quality factor, and uh, move it around until you find where it resonates. So that resonates at the same note, which is 158. I might want to go lower than that, so get my calculator out. There we go, 158 Hz divided by 2 equals 79 Hz. So 79. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. It's like a kind of resi bass note and just bring it down a little bit maybe. That sounds pretty cool. Still not really happy with that snare, I might just glitch that out too. I'm usually happier with things after they sound glitchy. So that sounds like it resonates with the bass too. That's really cool. Then what you might do is you might go uh, drum bounce, take all these three channels uh, with the feeding of audio option. Uh, if you have all the channels selected at once, you can do it all at once. So you just um, Click on the channel drum bounce and all of these channels are now being sent into this one. So make that an in track, press record there, press record up the top, uh, press play to record it. And then make that an auto so you can actually hear it. Uh, I might get rid of these three tracks now. So now we have all that in one channel, it makes it a lot easier to slice up and make it variate and glitch. I might take that first hit and reverse it. Oh, that's my shit. Um, I might, I might copy that bit a few times. Copy that bit. Uh, copy all of them, consolidate. Open up the fades option, put a fade on it. This one and triplets maybe one one two three four five six. So on the first four hits, give it like a triplet roll. I might fade them out, and then in the second two, I might fade it back in. Change it a little bit. Might reverse those hits there actually. Pitch the sample. Yeah, that sounds cool. So, yeah, basically, it's a good way to get nice glitchy beats with some form of swingy feel in it. And then, over the top of this sort of stuff, you could just 
add more loops. Uh, let's go to the bricks. <laughs> Fatter loop over the top just to give it some actual um, punch. Turn that down a bit. And what I might do is just um, chuck a few warp markers in there to get it all sitting right on the grid and in time. Do anything you want from here, slice this, hit, transpose it a little bit, duplicate these, maybe pitch those down, slice them up a little bit. Kick still sounds like it's a bit off. kick because that's a pretty good one. Make it zero. Get rid of that one up there actually. Something a bit weird. That one makes it a bit weird as well actually. Get rid of that. to this beat and pitch it up. After that I might have a reverse hit. So duplicate, command D, reverse. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. And then from this point you can sort of um, just take both beats and make rhythms like sort of Go nuts with your slicing, see what you can get. Whoa, sounds pretty harsh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Maybe reverse a kick here and there. Down. Yeah, so there you have it. It's a pretty cool way to make glitchy drum beats, and it's not that difficult. It's just how much slicing you want to do, really. Alright, cheers. Take care.